Section 7.4 is about the search for causality. This is a pretty verbose or wordy section. Um, so really just sit back and listen. Um, I think that'd be the best way to approach this section. Here are our learning objectives. So how do we determine if a correl correlation between two variables has to do with causality? So a correlation may suggest causality, but by itself, it never, never, ever, 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 ever establishes causality. So a correlation between two variables, friendly reminder, can be the result of a coincidence, a common underlying cause, or one variable actually having a direct influence on the other. That's correlation. So we can rule out the first two explanations of um, underlying cause or coincidence by conducting experiments. So we can rule out coincidence by repeating the experiment many times or using a large number of subjects in the experiment. We can rule out a common underlying cause by controlling and randomizing the experiment to eliminate the effects of confounding or interfering variables. We can establish causality with these guidelines. Okay, so if you are suspect, okay, if you suspect that a particular variable is causing some effect, look for situations in which the effect is correlated with the suspected cause even while other factors are away. Among groups that differ only in the presence or absence of the suspected cause, check that the effect is similarly absent or present. And you also want to look for evidence that larger amounts of the suspected cause produce larger amounts of the effect. Next, if the effect might be produced by other potential causes besides your suspected cause, make sure that the effect still remains after accounting for these other potential causes. Remember when we're doing ex an experiment, there are so many, so many variables that we can't control for. Um, and it's nice, you need to make sure you can account for them. Five, if possible, test the suspected cause with an experiment. If the experiment cannot be performed with humans for ethical reasons, consider doing the experiment with animals, cell cultures, or computer models. Next, try to determine the physical mechanism by which the suspected cause produces the effect. Sometimes correlation or the rack of correlation can hide behind an underlying causality. Confounding variables can prevent, uh, can prevent causes from showing up in experiments and studies. There are different levels of confidence in causality. So there's possible cause, which means we've discovered a correlation but cannot yet determine whether the correlation implies causality. In the legal system, possible cause is often the reason for starting an investigation. Probable cause means we have good reason to suspect that the correlation involves cause. Perhaps because some of the guidelines for establishing causality are satisfied. Cause beyond a reasonable doubt means we have found a physical model that is so successful in explaining how one thing causes the other that it seems unreasonable to doubt the causality. 